Readings from Music Student 101. Today, we're going to try something a little bit different. What's that, you ask? Stand by. Your hosts, Jeremy Burns and Matthew Scott Phillips, will have the answer in three, two, one. Hey, hey, Matt. Hey, Jeremy. I have some news. Oh, good. This episode right here. Yes. It's going to be episode number 40. Number 40. Wow. Can you believe it? Yay. So we, we've been doing this since July of 2016. Nice. What and is it now? It's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's 2018. It oh, is wow. February 2018-ish. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, I'm pretty proud of that. And we managed to keep a two, two episodes per month thing like we talked about, you know? Yeah, we've been real machines. A, a labor of love, no doubt. Yeah, it's all Jeremy's doing. I'm, I'm a lazy so-and-so who doesn't want to get out of bed and come over here, but you know. But again, Matt, we need your delicious brains. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that. But. <laughs> zombie apocalypse is right around the corner, and you'll be first to go. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the zombies have much use for a, for a music composer. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. they probably can't sing. Uh, they probably or, can't sing or play. You never know. You know, you can maybe use you know, use music to like calm them down. It might be worth a shot. Maybe so. I wonder what kind of music that would be. I don't know. You know, I mean, you're only going to get to try one, and if that one style doesn't work, you're going to get eaten. So, zombie musicologists out there, <laughs> write us info at musicstudent101.com. Let us know what you have in mind. <laughs> well, it's not uncustomary for us to begin an episode with some listener mail. Uh, so let me go ahead and get this one here. This is actually a, a message I got from a, a gentleman named Jonathan Naylor. Okay. I assume that's how you pronounce his last name. Mm. Uh, he says, <clears throat> he said, uh, hey, Jeremy, first and foremost, I'm loving the podcast. I started listening about a month ago, and I'm at episode 35 already. Wow. Listening at twice the speed <laughs> has its perks is what he says. So he's actually hearing us like the cocaine <laughs> The speed, the speed. So the actual speed that the podcast is is sped up. Yeah, he's doing he just... he's doing times two. Oh wow! So we're actually talking like this, and as soon as we get done, we're with it. Wow! But Apparently, he's... we must talk really slow. I thought, well, we're Southerners. <laughs> we, we are. <laughs> Anyways, he says uh, in the podcast, you both talk about wanting suggestions. If any listeners have any, I think what could be a great help is to make two recap episodes in which you guys edit together all the blitz summaries you do at the end of each episode into a large 60 to 90 minute episode. Oh, wow. For example, you take the summary segments from episode 1 through 19, put them all together in one episode. So he's saying he likes to go back and listen uh, to the summaries of the episode since most of the information can be found <laughs> in those last few minutes. That's the podcast equivalent of just read the book, right? Yeah, the, cl the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> the Cliff <right>? Notes, <laughs> But then you miss all of our charming uh, little... Uh, Witty banter. Banter, and, and yeah. Stuff, yeah. But, you know, whatever works best. I mean, tell to get through 35 episodes in one month and, and actually comprehend it and absorb it. Yeah, really. As he seems to be. You know, he seems yeah. to be really enjoying this. And we sure do appreciate the feedback. And you ask, and we shall deliver. We shall. We shall. To prove that we listen to our listeners. Mm, indeed. We are actually going to try this, actually. Um, yeah, we're going to try to recap... Maybe episodes one through 19 to start. We'll see how it That's goes. That's a good idea, actually. We'll see how it goes, man. Yeah. If we can get it all in one episode, that'd be great. But if we find ourselves prattling for two hours yeah. with our uh, digressions and whatnot. In other words, if this goes normally. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a two-parter. Yep. But perhaps necessary because I think we're actually... We're, we mentioned a few episodes ago that we're pretty much um, at the end of the Theory 1 kind of curriculum. We're starting into Theory 2-ish, yeah. So we're going to start talking about substitution, chord substitutions, and mm. secondary dominance. Yeah, uh, the five of the five chord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scary stuff. Chromaticism. Scary stuff. Chromaticism. So yeah. there's many things ahead, but... Um, yeah, I was looking at a piece the other day who has things called non-functioning seven chords. Non-functioning seven chords. Yeah, let's not get into that right now, but <laughs> just, just, just to throw some big words at you so you know what's coming. Well, you guys just keep listening, and you'll hear about them. <laughs> um, so, without further ado, I suppose here's here's my plan. Okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hit each episode, and it'll be kind of like a lightning round. We're not gonna obviously right. gonna 
Because I think what what Jonathan initially had in mind might might be kind of like a clip show. Yeah. And uh, I I don't know people I don't know if everyone's going to be on board with that kind of thing. You know, it's just re-recording. Yeah. Replaying what we've already recorded. Not to mention the editing nightmare that would be <laughs> to be a little selfish. <laughs> but <coughs> let's just go ahead and take it, man. Let's um, this is we're at episode forty, and we're going to give you a brief little kind of mm-hmm. summary of all the episodes so, we've hit up until. So what then. we have done so far. Yeah. What we have done so far. And then maybe later on, a little discussion on yeah. where we're going. Episode one, then. Episode one was pretty simple, man. It was uh, rhythm, and it was all you. Actually, no. Or was it all me? No, not even that. Not okay. even that. Our first episode was, um, we that was our intro episode. Oh, Where we kind of yeah. talked a little bit about who we were. Yeah. You know, so if you want to know who we are and how we have any authority on music or any of the subjects that we're talking about, that's yeah. one way you can find out more about us. Yeah, all right. Do you want to do go through that again quickly? Uh, <laughs> no. Sum- summarize that? <laughs> yeah. No. But at okay. the end, we're going to summarize every episode again. Okay. For our summary. <sighs> okay. No. <laughs> I got confused. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, wait, 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 wait. Another thing I'll say about this episode before we move on is we haven't really talked a lot lately. We did mention in that episode one time where you can hear our music. Yes. Our personal projects, right? Right. And we haven't really said much about that since then, a year and a half ago, right? Yeah, well, it's sort of the sacrifice of pedagogy. (sighs) Yep. Let's give them a reminder, though, Matt. How can they uh, hear your music? All right. I am on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Matthew hyphen Scott hyphen Phillips. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am on uh, Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash MSP music, all one word. Mm. Uh, I have uh, my own personal website, which is MatthewScottPhillips.com. Uh, you can, in any of those places, uh, check out latest recordings and uh, performances of my compositions and, you know, stay abreast of uh, what's coming down the pipeline. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I almost said you can listen to me on Music Student 101, but you guys already know that. There's a few episodes <laughs> that kick off with your fantastic music. and I hope Yeah, there are a few. Quite a few more, too. Let's hope so. You're just talking about your improv compositions on the piano over there, right? Oh <laughs> yeah, right. You know the we we should do we should do an outtakes episode sometime and just listen to me because I I have a I have a bad habit of of kind of flicking around on the <laughs> kind, of, kind of you know. Hey, some of those might have been some of your coolest ideas. You just had to uh, and you know work on them a little bit, <laughs> develop them. Yeah. You know, you never know. You never know. Um, but anyways, my music, you can find it pretty much the same way. You can find it on SoundCloud. Um, Area 47 is the name of my, my little music getup. And, um, yeah, most of the music is on SoundCloud, especially the, the, um, bumper tracks you're hearing on a lot of these episodes. And, uh, also I play in a few bands. Jasper Cole is the Irish band, kind of punk Irish band I play in. And they have their own website, jaspercole.com. The Sunquakes, that's my original kind of Birmingham my Birmingham buddies uh, from Tonal Vision, Colin and uh, Jimmy that I went to high school with, and uh, Miguel, the drum player from Jasper Cole, all have this original band, and uh, that's the Sunquakes. They're on Facebook. Jasper Cole's on Facebook. Tonal Vision's on Facebook. That was the first band I was ever in, still together, um, though we play fairly rarely. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all of my music. So um, well, let's move on, shall we? Um, episode two, like you were saying earlier, is when we finally get into a little bit of theory. Okay. And I flew solo on this one. That's what I was remembering. Yeah, and um, basically it's kind of like a, a little kind of intro to um, scales, intervals, and triads. Uh-huh. But also what exactly a melody is, which, mm-hmm. as we said, is just, you know, an independent line of music moving over time. Right, yeah. Melodies time. are thought of as horizontal. Uh-huh. Right? So, And they're thought of as generally being one note at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is uh, this is the singable component to most uh, music you listen to, mm-hmm. and writing a good one is very very hard. Very very hard. There's yeah. no there is no one correct way to come up with a good melody. It's it's you know, it, there's nothing you can sit down and say, "Well, do this and you'll write a good melody." It's it's uh, more intuitive than that, more mm-hmm. organic than that. Right, right. So we touched on melody, and then we got into harmony a little bit, you know. Yeah, um, harmony, which we define as sort of the vertical aspect, yeah. the the notes playing in simultaneity with each other, mm-hmm. which is uh, commonly referred to as chords. Yep, yep. Mm. And then we also talked a little bit about how you can play the same melody with different chords, and it would sound completely kind of like a different thing. Oh, absolutely. Vice versa, you can play different chords over 
Yeah. Same chords over a different mm-hmm. melody. And you know. different chords will bring out different sort of emotional components of your melody. Yeah. yeah. So that was um that was a pretty brief episode and uh, Yeah. <laughs> our summary might have been even longer. <laughs> but uh let's move on, man. Episode three. That was you your solo gig. Ah, oh, my solo gig. And you did it was on rhythm. It was on rhythm. And mainly just like um t- Time signatures, yeah, beat divisions. Uh huh. Yeah. So there is a so there is a uh, there's a sort of a whole lot of terms here that tend to get grouped together, but they all kind of have specific little different meanings. Mm-hmm. So beat, yeah, is also known as pulse. Yeah. It is the it is the 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 tapping of your foot or the nodding of your head, the consistent pulse that that underlines so much music. Mm-hmm. Um, meter then is the process by which these pulses are grouped together into groups. Groups of four beats or three beats or six beats or whatever beats, mm-hmm. right? And then rhythm is the length of notes that are actually played in relation to those beats. So, you know, some notes are, are uh, two beats long, some notes are one beat long, some notes are half a beat long or a beat and a half Mm-hmm. Or whatever, you know, and so that is the the particular length of the notes and the combination of those note lengths that make up a given piece of music, because right. it's rhythm. Yeah. So uh, typical meters are things like four four, in which those beats are grouped into four beats, mm-hmm. and those uh, those beats uh, each equal a quarter note in length in sheet music. Right. Yeah. Um, Others, for example, three four, they are grouped into threes, and uh, those those groups of threes will equal a quarter note. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so, for example, if I were to play in uh, uh, four four, I might say, okay, I'm counting four beats, you know, and every cycle is is one bar or mm-hmm. one measure. Right? Yeah. So one two three four is a measure, and I can play quarter notes. In that meter, and it will become a. In, in, they will each equal a beat. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. So that in that last one, there was one that lasted a beat and a half, mm-hmm. yeah. and then one that lasted half a beat to to make it the math work out right. Mm-hmm. So. Very good, man. Yeah. And then just to be clear, the top number on a meter signature or a uh, time signature is actually the number of beats per measure. Yeah. And the bottom number is? Is the note value. The note value. So quarter note, half note. Whatever. Whatever. Um, great, man. Let's move on. We, oh, you know, another interesting little note about that, looking back at the at our, at, our, at our podcasting history, those were the only two episodes that we ever flew solo. Yeah. And we kind of decided that it was, a, it was a more fun and a little more engaging for us just to get together and... Um, and do them together. Because yeah. yeah, we more, enjoy doing this. Yeah, it's organic. I like talking <laughs> to this guy. Yeah. I hope so by now. Well, um, so moving on, we did episode four was uh, ear training uh, ear training tips. We don't really have to say a whole lot about that because mainly it was ear training tips. But Yeah. Do you have any favorite tips that you remember or anything you took away from that episode? My favorite tips in ear training, break, I guess, break them down into small tasks. Uh-huh. You know, um, if, you're, uh, if you're trying to dictate a melody, you know, work on the rhythms first. Mm-hmm. And then work on the first and last measure. And, and then work on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, practice your scales. Yeah. Back to singing your scales. Singing is key. Singing, singing, singing. You know, you need those sounds in your head. <clears throat> you know, um, work on uh, your intervals. Working on being able to uh, sing down from an interval to the tonic note of the scale you're in, mm. and 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 so doing, be able to figure out what that interval is. That's been one of my <laughs> biggest aids, actually. I, I, I might go ahead and say that's my favorite tip: singing mm. down. It works. Yeah. It works. So, like, just for example, if I was, you know, so that top note, mm-hmm. so we hit tonic in three notes, so we have a third. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Very nice. Very nice. Sing down. Uh, and we also talked about dissonance levels, how 
maybe eventually you can get to where you kind of recognize certain dissonance levels, so you can mm-hmm. uh, you can uh, figure out different intervals through that. Yeah. I still kind of like the the method where you're kind of using folk examples or music examples to hear these intervals. Oh yeah, right. Like my body lies over the ocean for that, and stuff. Yep, yeah, for that major six. Major six, six yeah. So. Another thing we talked about on the ear training tips episode was um, some great great apps that you can use for ear training. Mm-hmm. Musictheory.net. Yeah. Uh, Teoria.com. Mm. Uh, if you got if you got forty bucks to spend, get a copy of McGamut. Yeah. Yeah. That's a software you actually plug into your. You're actually doing the. It's an application on your. Yeah, phone. yeah, yeah. I imagine they had that for smartphone now. No, that's amazing. They haven't changed McGamut in like twenty years. Come on, McGamut, <laughs> get with it, y'all. Um, now another thing uh, we didn't know back then, what we probably would have mentioned, was our friends over at Musical U. Oh yes, absolutely. The musical, the musicality podcast, and Musical U. Mm-hmm. Institution in general. The podcast you can listen to for free and enjoy it. The uh, the episode, the uh, actual service, Musical U, is an ear training service that you pay a monthly fee for. Yeah, which kind of keeps you going, keeps you doing it, keeps you motivated, <laughs> it keeps you motivated. But it's a fantastic service. Anyways, I got one more thing to say about that before we move on. We had a listener named Catherine Gonzalez. Uh huh. Catherine says, "Hello, I just started listening to your podcast on Spotify, which is oh, pretty wow. cool." Yeah. I was wondering if you guys can recommend me apps for Android phone or ear train like ear training apps for the Android phone. Yeah. So I both of us being iPhone users don't have we're not the authorities on that. <laughs> right. But we do want to put a call out to our other listeners who have been using some good um, you know, ear training apps on the Android. Yeah. What other smartphones you're using. Uh, write us in. Yeah, definitely, because uh, we'd be interested to know ourselves. Leave a message on our Facebook page, Music Student One O One. Right there on Facebook, man. Mm. Um, that'll be a great help. Catherine, thanks for writing in. We really appreciate it. Uh, Catherine is from Puerto Rico. Oh, nice. So nice indeed. But unfortunately, they've had a pretty, pretty. Uh, oh yeah. Lame. Uh, hope, hope, uh, hope we're, uh, hope you're making it out there. Catherine. Yeah, man. We our heart goes out to you guys for after that storm. Um, pretty big deal. But um, I hope Catherine that your family and your friends are all all doing well. And to all of our friends in Puerto Rico, um, Godspeed. Thanks again for writing, Catherine, and thanks for writing, everybody. Uh, you know where to find us, info at musicstudent101.com. Um, so, yeah, man, write us in, guys. Let us know some of the apps that you've been using, because mm-hmm. I know there's plenty more. We don't have time to look through all the apps. <laughs> and my training's actually gotten pretty good lately, <laughs> thanks to Music Student 101. It's all about practice. Mm-hmm. Let's move on, shall we? Mm. Um, episode 5... One of our most popular episodes ever was an um, episode on the major scales and key signatures. Oh, yes. And there's a whole lot of stuff that we covered in that episode. Yeah, that one was intense. But um, some of the highlights might involve, A, the ability to read a key signature. Mm-hmm. We kind of talked about that. We talked about um, a couple of different ways you could do that. Yeah. Do you remember some of your cool little uh, tricks for identifying a key signature? Well... For one thing, major um, key signature. Yeah, for major key signatures. For one thing, uh, if you have a sharp key, the uh, the tonic of the key is going to be a half step above the last sharp to the right in your key signature. Right. Yeah. You know? um, so you can just take that note. You know, if it's if it's A sharp, then you know you raise it a half a step, and you know uh, that's B. So you're in the key of B major. Yeah. You know, B major has Five sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and A sharp. And how did you know that order of sharps? Oh, I memorized it at some point. So F, uh, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Yeah. Fat cows get drunk after eating breakfast. Or Fat Charlie gets, what was it? Fat Charlie goes down and eats breakfast? Something like that, yeah. And we we figured out, I guess, the more... uh, Foul or the more yeah they yeah those those, those got uh, PG thirteen pretty fast uh-huh. you can uh, but it helps you remember them I never forgot them it does and so as as we sort of go around the circle of fifths and sharp keys we're just adding one of those sharps uh-huh. so C has no sharps no sharps G which is a fifth above C right the note G you can count C D E F G and it's a fifth above G has one sharp uh-huh. it's going to be F sharp D which count up five from G it's going to have two F sharp and C sharp. Mm-hmm. A is going to have three, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. Uh, e is going to have four, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. 
Uh, where am I? B is going to have five, like we said. Uh, F sharp is going to have six. Everything but B is going to be sharp. And then uh, C sharp is going to have seven. And C sharp, all the, all the notes are sharp. That's as sharp as it gets, huh? That's as sharp as it gets. And then uh, with uh, the flats, uh, your key signature is almost always the penultimate flat. Okay. So if you see three flats mm -hmm. in your key signature, uh, the next to last flat is your tonic. I see. So if I see three flats, they're B flat, E flat, and A flat, I'm in the key of E flat major. Okay, that's you know, a good if I, one. If I see five flats, uh, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat, I am in D flat major, the okay. next to last one. Wow. Yeah. I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah. And there's an order of flats, too, which is the order of sharps backwards. Mm. And it's just B gesif. B e a d g c f. Or Big Ed and Dan go camping frequently. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. Uh, the key of F has one flat, and it's B flat. You just kind of have to remember that. Yep. It's the only natural note that has a flat key. Mm -hmm. uh, B flat has two flats, B flat and E flat. Mm -hmm. E flat has three flats, B flat, E flat, A flat. A flat has four flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. D flat has five, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. Yeah, um, G flat has six. Big Ed and Dan go camp. Yeah. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. Hmm. You know, and and then uh, C flat has seven. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. Flat as it gets. Flat as it gets. So C natural is all is all naturals. C flat is all flats. C sharp is all sharps. Yeah. Very nice. And we'll talk a little bit about the circle of fifths in our. Circle of Fists. We're getting there. Pretty, so we're getting there. Uh, episode six. This was more around the time where I think we were still initially thinking about catering more to college students. <laughs> okay. So we had an entire episode on good and bad study habits. Oh, wow. A very useful episode for incoming freshmen. I would yeah. Think. Or anyone really who wants to study anything. Come yeah. Come to think of it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, get lots of sleep. <clears throat> lots of sleep, yeah. Study a little bit over a long period of time. Don't mm -hmm. try to cram in a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. My big takeaway from that was that you 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 only absorb your like your your maximum absorbency potential occurs within thirty to forty five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get, you starts dropping off. So mm -hmm. you, yeah, that's another reason why the uh, cram session, two hour cram session, doesn't really work too well. <laughs> right. Let's move on, man. I think that's probably okay. Good for that, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, episode seven was one of my favorites. I got so many favorites. I can't. I can't. <laughs> this one was odd time signatures. Oh gosh. And we we really kind of spent a good bit of time talking about different bands who have weird, uh, you know, songs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we found I think the one that blew me away was uh, one of Frank Zappa's called "Keep It Greasy," <laughs> and he had a measure of nineteen sixteen. Wow. Followed by a measure of twenty one sixteen. Ugh. I was like, oh, that hurts. Yeah, it does hurt. You really have to. Yeah. So twenty one beats in a measure. Mm hmm. And then those beats are all a sixteenth note long. <laughs> yeah, that's like that happens pretty fast. So, other than just a fun little discussion on things like that, we talked about ways to identify meters, right? Mm. Like complex meters, and it really comes down to identifying first off where the one is, right? Uh huh. Which usually occurs on a strong beat. Well, it is a strong. It beat. is the strong beat, right? Right. It is the strong beat. It is accented in music in a variety of ways. Maybe that's where the chord changes. Uh huh. Uh, maybe that's where the bass drum is. You know, maybe that's where uh, um, you know, an accent occurs. Mm -hmm. it, it occurs. It is accented in many ways. For and you just have to listen on a case by case basis and, and find where that one is. Mm -hmm. You know, and at that point, it's just counting up a number of beats mm -hmm. yeah. until it resets on that strong beat again. Yeah. Yeah. Great episode. Good times. <laughs> Odd times. Odd times. All right. Next up, we had minor scales and key signatures. So same situation. Uh-huh. Uh, minor scales share key signatures with major scales. So example, just like E flat, three flats is E flat major. Uh -huh. Three flats is also C minor. Yeah. So what happens here is that the minor scale version, what we call the relative minor uh -huh. of that major scale, is three half steps below. And make sure you change note names twice when you're counting down. Mm, okay. So E flat down to D is a half step. D down to D flat is a half step. D flat down to D is a half step. D flat down to C is a half step. 
So we're in the key of C minor with three flats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so if you want to find the relative minor of a major, mm-hmm. you actually count up six. Well, that's the same thing as counting down three. Or counting down yeah. three, right. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then vice versa, if you want to find the minor, the major equivalent of a minor key signature. You count up three and a half steps. Right. Change notes every time. Yeah. You're not going... C. Well, change notes twice. Uh, well, between... Oh. Between, between the three and a half steps, make sure you're changing note names twice. But if you're going up six, you still have to change the note name six times, right? Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. I can't count to six. I'm a musician. I count <laughs> yeah, right. to four. Right, right. Well, cool, man. Um, another popular episode. Good. Same order of sharps and flats. That doesn't change. Yeah, the order of sharps and flats does not change. So A minor is no sharps or flats. Mm-hmm. Uh, this three and a half steps down from C. Uh, a minor has no sharps or flats. Uh, D minor has one flat. G minor has two flats. Uh, C minor has three flats. F minor has four flats. And they're the same. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. You know, mm-hmm. th- that order's the same. In sharp land, uh, E minor has one sharp, B minor has two sharps, uh, F sharp minor has three sharps, you know, uh, C sharp minor will have four sharps, et cetera, et cetera, and the, they're the same sharps. Mm-hmm. Great. So uh, next up, we had two episodes that kind of coincided, nine and ten. Number nine was intervals in theory. Intervals in theory. And then number ten was basic Intervals ear training. Right. Right? Yeah. So intervals in theory, uh, learning, how to, learning how to deal with intervals and talk about intervals and understand. Uh, an interval is the distance between two notes, mm-hmm. basically. Um, and uh, within our 12-note system, every possible combination of two notes has an interval associated with it. It has a number of half steps. Ah. So... Uh, you can get to your intervals by remembering that a minor second is a half step apart. You know, a major second is two half steps apart, and a minor third is three half steps apart, and a, a, a major third is four half steps apart. If you're ever going to do set class theory, that actually starts to come in handy. Hmm. But it's also uh, true that notes from the major scale are either major or perfect. Yeah. So if I'm in my C major scale. Now, from C to D is a major second. From C to E is a major third. You know, from uh, C to F is a perfect fourth. We call it perfect for reasons that go back to the Middle Ages and, and how uh, consonant, ergo, semi-divine, they thought that sound was. Mm-hmm. But they call it a perfect fourth. Mm. Same thing with a fifth. That is called a perfect fifth, C to G. So this this uh, uh, interval of a f- five notes up in the major scale, perfect fifth, yeah. um, and a major six, you know, and a major seven, and a perfect octave. Yeah. Now it do- it holds semi true in the minor scale, but not really. Yeah. Um, uh, so when you start talking about minor intervals, they are a half step smaller than. Uh, a, a major interval. So if I have my major third between uh, D and F sharp, you know, I can I can make that a minor third by making it smaller, either by lowering the top note a half step. You know, so this is now a minor third. Mm-hmm. Or to go back to my original major third, I can raise the bottom note a half step from uh, D to D sharp. Hmm. And this is a minor third. Yeah. Right? So it's just a half step. However you get there, think of them as like the ceiling and floor, and then the, the, the interval distance is the space in between. Huh. Uh, but ha- So you can either lower the ceiling or raise the floor. Uh. Point is a minor third is a half step smaller than a major third. Mm-hmm. And a diminished is a half step smaller than that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, a, an augmented interval is a half step larger than a major interval or a perfect interval. Okay. So major third, you know, an augmented third, <clears throat> and harmonically equivalent to a perfect fourth. Yes. Meaning it's the same thing. Thought I recognized right. that before. Yes, equivalency in harmonic. Yeah. Uh, perfect thing. octave. Different names. Augmented octave. Mm. Mm. And um, 
the interval that is a half step smaller than a perfect interval we tend to call diminished. Yeah. Because reasons. Because reasons. <laughs> no, perfect fifth, a half step smaller, diminished fifth. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And then we had the little thing where we kind of played all the intervals and talked about quick examples of each one. Do you want to do that real quick? Yeah, sure. So uh, just like for movie, movie examples yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Okay, so yeah. so we have uh, – so to recognize these in, uh, in, in, in music or in ear training mm-hmm. or what have you. Uh, a minor second is to me is Jaws. Smallest. Yeah, the smallest one possible in Western music. A major second. What did we have for a major second? Happy birthday is one. Oh, yeah. The third note of happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Between P and birth. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's where that happens. The, yeah. That's not weird. So minor third. I don't know what we I don't remember what we said for this. Green sleeves was a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Which doesn't come on the radio all the time, but most people yeah, somehow are familiar people with People seem to, to know it. Yeah, so minor third is uh, the first two notes of green sleeves. So. Yep. Perfect fourth is Here Comes the Bride. Mm-hmm. So perfect fourth. Between here and comes. Right. First two notes. All right. Uh, diminished fifth, also known as the tritone. Mm-hmm. Um, you can think of uh, Maria from West Side Story. Mm-hmm. Or um, a slightly more modern reference might be a, a very famous TV show that everybody knows and loves. Um, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow um, people. That show yeah, about yellow people. Yeah. I. I. Man, I'm just playing tritones. I don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> the devils. Uh, the devils. Uh, interval. Right. Yeah. Right. They thought it was. Uh, they thought it would call the devil's attention to you, back in olden times. Well, it's a very alarming interval for one thing, and I mm-hmm. think that the French caught onto that, didn't they? Yeah. And they used yeah. that. Or- uh, for their for their uh, uh, police horns. I think a few countries do that. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, they're they're a lot actually. I've heard it a good bit. <clears throat> Great man. Oh, moving on. What else? Perfect fifth. Yeah. Uh, it has that sort of Roman feel, like those old Roman movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, minor six. You know, it's like every ever evanescent song ever. You know? <laughs> we couldn't think of a lot of examples for that one, could we? No, but it's um. Wasn't there like a hip hop song that went? Bum, 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 bum. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> one thing I I use for the minor six is to imagine where it's going to go after where it feels like it wants to pull downward. Oh yeah, it pulls down towards soul. Yeah. Towards that perfect Absolutely, fifth. Yeah. yeah. So if you hear that, and you're kind of wanting to hear it go, yeah. There's definitely. a good chance you heard a minor six. Yeah. Um, major six, of course, like we said, my body lies over the ocean. Yeah. Or a very popular, you know, uh, broadcast television station. Oh, yeah. The one with the pigeon. That one. Or the penguin. It's a peacock. I <laughs> know, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm trying, right. to, I'm trying to avoid copyright. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, then I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing a, a second inversion major chord, which has a major six in it. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Next up, uh, minor seven. My, uh, minor seven. Uh, Star Trek, the ah. original Star Trek. Mm-hmm. If you remember the original Star Trek. I don't remember how I don't know how many people even remember that anymore. No, but that still seems to be a prime example when I Google it. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Then the major seven really kinda wants to pull the tonic, right? Ah. Uh. I'm 
on, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. And then that brings us to the perfect octave. And then the perfect octave. Pretty easy one. Mm -hmm. um, if you really need, if you really need something, yeah, somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, nice. Yeah, but uh, most people can get that one though. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first ones you kind of kind of recognize. Yeah, because there's no dissonance at all in those. You know. All you're doing is doubling the frequency. Yeah, yeah. Of the note itself. Mm -hmm. So if you have a two twenty, a four forty is going to be the. Mm, uh, it's going to be an octave. An one. octave later. Yeah. yeah. what ear training will do for you. Yeah. All right. Matt, just moving on. Matt had no notation in front of him. He really just pulled, <laughs> pulled that out of his pocket. <laughs> cool, man. Let's move on. Um, so that was the 9 and 10, the ear training episodes, basically. Mm, ear, yeah. Intervals, specifically. Mm -hmm. Now, episode 11 was another fun one because we talked about music career possibilities. I remember that, yeah. And we hit a lot of them. A lot. Uh, just to name a few... I mean, you can be obviously in academia. There's all kinds right, of right. Yeah. You talked a little bit about that. Obviously, you can be a gigging musician. I talked a little bit about that. Yeah. And then there's all the things that people in between and up and beyond that people not, mm -hmm. might not have even considered. You know, music therapists. Mm hmm. Musicologist. Uh, musicologist. Mm hmm. Um, we have our good friend Chris Knutson, who I've spoken to, and he's going to come and talk to us pretty soon about being uh, like stage work. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people don't think they can get in. You know. Right. It's, it is a thing that you can do, and you can use your musical knowledge. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. technical knowledge to help mm. you. Audio and sound design, audio uh, recording. Yeah. Uh, composition. Composition, or, obviously. Sound yeah. design for music and yeah. film. Composition for music and film. Film and television. Film and television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so, yeah, man, there's all kinds of things you can do, and we're going to have quite a few of those coming up. I've already spoken to this fella, Jason Burns, who's a luthier. Ooh. Another thing I hadn't thought about. Nice. Now, I guess you don't have to be a musician to be a luthier. You can be a kind of, it's like a woodworker, but I guess you have to, you, you want to well, know. Well, no, you have to know at least enough about the instrument to make to make quality work, right? Yeah. To make a good resonant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, so, I'm looking forward to that. I feel like you'd have to have a deep knowledge of the instrument, you know? Yeah. And, and in order to have a deep knowledge of the instrument, I imagine you end up playing it a pretty good bit, right? So, yeah. Anyways, anyone who's not a musician might not think about being a luthier. Okay, so um, that's going to be really fun. We're going to have a lot more discussions on that, and we're going to talk about careers and things you can do. So that was kind of like a little um, intro mm. to what's to come, right? Mm. Episode 12. Now we got into, uh, and the same deal with 12 and 13 as intervals. We did basic triads in theory on 12. Yeah. And ear training for basic triads on episode 13. Right. So there's only four of them. Yeah. And there's major, minor, augmented, and diminished. Mm-hmm. Um, a major triad is a major third and a perfect fifth. All play together. Mm. A minor triad is a minor third and a perfect fifth. Still that perfect fifth, yeah. All play together. A diminished triad is a minor third and a diminished fifth, hence the name. All play together. Mm. And then an augmented triad is a major third and an augmented fifth. All play together. Mm. And we kind of talked about how those, how, we f how those chords make us feel, how they affect us, right? Yeah. Uh, happy. Major. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Joyful. Yeah, joyful even. Mm -hmm. um, uh, minor, mm -hmm. sad. Stern. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm, but you get the idea. <laughs> yes, yeah, stern, um, serious. Diminished, very, very dissonant, right? Tense. Tense, very, very tense. It needs it's release. Actually a, it's actually a chord that wants really, really bad to resolve somewhere. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Love it. And Indeed. then finally the augmented, we talked about how it kind of has a almost disorienting. Yeah. It comes, it, it, yeah. It's from a, it's a subset of something called the whole tone scale. Uh-huh. And so it, it's sort of that, uh, you know, when any, anybody's about to go into a flashback in a, in a, in a TV show. <laughs> yeah. It was Wayne's World. Wayne's World, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we have the four basic triads. The four basic triads. Yeah. If, if you want to hear them and listen to them and really get into them and dig into them, listen to those episodes. Absolutely. 12 and 13. Because mm-hmm. there are tricks, I believe, to, to getting, you know, what triad, you know, how to get a triad based on D and all that good stuff. Oh, yes. Get a major D major chord and an A minor chord and all that. So next we had episode 14, Being a Performer. Oh. This is one of our special topics episodes. Yeah. Yeah. A.K.A. Matt didn't prepare anything to talk about. (laughs) Hey, well, you know, you probably caught on by now, our uh, listeners, that we have this kind of, we have genres of episodes, right? Yeah. We have ear training. Yeah, we have, we have theory. theory. We have special topics and special guests. And special guests. Yeah. And uh, what, what am I? What am I leaving out? That's about it. That's yeah. pretty good. Mainly, yeah. And you know, we still we keep promising to do history. History. That was it. <laughs> yeah, we did do one history episode. We'll talk about that yeah, in just yeah, a second. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think the main gist of that episode was um, how. Sometimes when you get up on stage and you're you're performing, you're doing more than just playing the notes. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it really creates a special effect on the viewer slash listener. Absolutely, and maybe to the listener too. Just yeah, if someone's just listening. Yeah, you know, even in classical music, where you think that kind of stuff is not supposed to matter, you know, body language can mean a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see, yeah, you see, you see them kind of really getting into it, and yeah. Had that wild look in their eyes when they're playing busy stuff. And it's right. like, oh, this guy's really, really into it. And it gets you into it. Yeah. So yeah. the whole idea was kind of embodying a persona. Yeah. Right? Yep. Stepping outside of yourself if you're not that type of person. Right. Um, and if you are, just keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> now, that's not to say you can't play music without dancing and jumping around, right? Right. But it does seem to make a bit of a difference. Yeah, in the right context, certainly. In the right context, right. <laughs> You know, you don't see a lot of um. You don't see a lot of that in the studio. <laughs> what was it? Who's the uh, the sitar player? Ravi Shankar. Yeah, you gonna... don't really see a lot of sitar players jumping around. He's not going to jump around. No. Yeah, it's it's sometimes it adds a little spice to the performance. It's right. a performance, right? It's a performance. Yeah. So. So perform. Perform. Get into it, <laughs> even if you had a really crappy day. <laughs> um. So moving on, we had inversions and figured bass, which turned out to be a pretty useful tool yeah to know about right yeah so a uh, chord in which the root of the chord the chord for which the the note for which that chord is named is 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 the lowest sounding note mm-hmm. we consider that to be a root position chord for example if i'm in e major here then e lowest note i sound that is root position um if i were to put take that e and and transpose it up an octave so that G sharp was my lowest sounding note. That is first inversion. Mm. And in, in when we write this in harmonic analysis, we will call that uh, we will call that a six. Yeah, six yeah. chord. Yeah, because of the interval of a six. That's in it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Over the whatever Roman numeral it is. Yeah. You'll see that little floating six. Right. To the top right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Superscript. Superscript. Yeah. There you go. And then um, if I were to also transpose that G-sharp up an octave, we're left with B as the lowest sounding note, which is our second inversion, uh, uh, called a 6-4, because of the 6 and the 4 intervals that are in it. Mm. And with, uh, with uh, 7 chords, you know, um, all of those same things apply. Root position, mm. and then first inversion, and then second inversion. And because the seven chord has four notes, we have the possibility of this uh, third inversion, in which the seven chord is the lowest sounding note. Hmm. Strange. And that's and what is the superscript? Uh, 
uh, first inversion seventh chord is six five, second inversion seven chord is four three, and third inversion seven chord is four two. Hmm. Very good. What else can we say about inversions in figured bass? Uh, briefly, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. Listen to the episode. <laughs> yeah. You'll love it. And get on the website and look at our examples. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is all on the website. All of this is on the website. Go to musicstudent101.com, click on the podcast, and then you can choose whatever episode you're listening to. Boom. You got visual aids. You got notated examples. It's a beautiful thing. Now, episode number 16, we had diatonic chords. Yes. And this is talking a little bit more about the Roman numerals we were talking about. Right, yeah. Chords chords made out of by using only the notes of the major scale that you're playing in. So if you're in the key of D major and you are playing a D major scale. Um if you use those notes, you'll notice that the tonic chord D is a major chord. You know, using notes out of the D major scale, so I have two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. I'm using D, F sharp, and A, right? Uh, major chord. Mm -hmm. uh, the two chord, based off the second degree of that scale, E, minor chord. E, G, and B, all in the D major scale. Mm -hmm. right? um, the three chord, uh, based off of that uh, D major scale, the, uh, off that third scale degree, F sharp, Minor chord, F sharp, A, and C sharp. You know, a minor third, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. Right. Um, the fourth is again major G. The fifth is going to be major. The sixth is going to be minor. And then the seven is super messed up. It is going to be diminished. That changes a little bit for the minor keys, right? It changes uh, quite a good bit. So if I'm in D minor, the, the tonic is minor. The two is diminished. The three is major. Mm. The four is minor. The fifth is minor. Although a lot of times we we uh, we alter that intentionally, we go in and make the make the uh, seven scale degree a sharp or a natural to make the five major for reasons of of you know aesthetics. Really, mm -hmm. the six is going to be major, and the seven is going to be major. Although again, sometimes we raise that up. A, a half step to make a diminished chord right there for the sake of just uh, aesthetics and having a good pull back towards tonic. Right. Mm. We kind of had a, a discussion on that on one of our more recent episodes, actually the last episode, right? The oh, seven, yeah. It was all about the seven chord. Oh, yes, indeed. Great episode. Yes, indeed. So there you go. Hey. Uh, diatonic chords. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of music and a lot of really good music uses those chord qualities. If you're on the fifth scale degree, you know, make it major if you're in a major key. Or, you know, uh, make it minor if you're, in, make the uh, scale degree three minor if you're in a, a major key, or major if you're in a minor key, and, you know. Okay, shall we move on? Is that, is that good yeah. for that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so episode 17 was our first, um, our first official musician interview, mm. which was fantastic, man. <laughs> Matt Slocum on the piano. Oh, he, he's, a, he's a great pianist, isn't he? He is. He's fantastic. He came I feel in. bad that people have to listen to me play piano for all those episodes after. He... <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't afford Matt Slocum. Every day, yeah. No, <laughs> no. Sit there and play examples for us. Yeah, but uh, talked about his, uh, his career as a pianist and how he got into playing piano. And, uh... and then we spent a little time talking about the history of the instrument. Right, yeah. So, um, and, you know, different different approaches to practicing, warm-ups mm -hmm. and all that stuff. We yep. try and cover everything we can about the instrument. We really did. We really did. Uh, on a kind of somber note, um, not very long after that episode, Matt was wor he, he was playing with Colonel Bruce Hampton. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Colonel Bruce Hampton's 70-year birthday, mm. 70th birthday, and he, he died on stage. He passed, passed away on stage, and Matthew yes. was, Matt was there. Uh, that's, that's really too bad. And I, I have a hard time thinking about what that would be like for the musicians to actually have that happen. Yeah. You know, but on the other end of that, can you imagine 
if you're that if you're a musician like that, can you imagine a, a better way to go? I mean, probably not. <laughs> there, you, your 70th birthday, you're surrounded by all your friends and loved ones, your band, mm-hmm. you know, and he just kind of slumped over on the stage. He went down, and I think the band didn't even realize he. They they thought maybe he was just getting into the yeah yeah, and then he just didn't move for a while. And wow. turns out he yeah that was kind of a sad moment. But yeah, really too bad. Matthew continues to play with a lot of those musicians, and uh, he's got himself quite a quite a crew that he he goes around with. Oh, so. Cool. Right. We'd love to see him again and hear from him again. I know he's doing great. So that was episode seventeen. That was episode seventeen. Episode eighteen was our first um, our first episode on harmonic progression. Oh, Which at the time we called harmonic dictation because right, yeah. students would listen to chord progressions and yeah. have to write them down. Right, yeah. But we're kind of also just using this as a way to recognize harmonic progressions. Right, yeah. This was a very ambitious episode. I don't know what we were thinking, <laughs> but we covered the uh, the one, two, four, and five chord. Oh, wow. On that episode. Oh, wow. We're nuts. We're, we are nuts. So um, some of the most basic uh, yeah, uh, bass lines, one... Or most common chord progressions you'll ever find, right? One, four, uh, five, one. Mm-hmm. Right? Nice and easy. All primary triads, all one, four, and five. Based on those skill steps. Yeah. Um, you can add a two chord in first inversion and substitute that for a four chord. Mm. And it's a, it's, got, it's a little more dramatic, right? And then five. Uh... So, so you hear how the four chord is a little bland. And then the 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 two chord has got just a little bit more drama to it. Mm-hmm. So, and that and that 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 bass line stays the same. One, four, five, one. Yeah. Right? But uh, we're, we're playing a first inversion, I'm in C major here, so we're playing a first inversion D minor chord. Mm-hmm. You know, up to, I'm going to, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be all slick and just make that a 5-7. Nice. One of the, one of the big, uh, one of the big advantages to knowing our inversions is they allow us to write kind of cool bass lines. Yeah. Right. So you can you can do this thing where you go you know from one uh, to uh, five six four you know to one six um, to a normal four chord yeah, to a five chord and then to back to a one chord. Mm. Yeah. Can you imagine a world where we didn't have inversions? Uh, and ad suck. The <laughs> music would kind of suck, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun episode. Yes, it was. And then episode 19. We had Cadences Part 1. Yeah, and I don't know if there's going to be a Part 2. That might have been my mistake, actually. We covered way we too much. Covered all, we kind of covered all the cadences. Um, <clears throat> so I might have to go back and change that. Mm-hmm. It might just be Cadences. It might just be Cadences. Unless we could think of something else to say about Cadences. But I think we said most of it. Uh, what what did we say about cadences? The idea behind cadences is that they are chord progressions that end a phrase. So um, I'm just sitting around here and I'm just playing stuff, you know. Well, you know, I'm just playing around, and I can, you know, and I'm in, I'm coming to the end of my sort of musical phrase. You know, I can end this in a couple of ways. Uh, I can end it with an authentic, a perfect authentic cadence. P A C. Right. Which means, um, I'm going to have a five chord with a five in the bass mm-hmm. and a scale degree seven, the third of the five chord in the in the soprano. Mm. So, um, Very, very satisfying, very strong cadence, right? It's because it ends with one in the bass and one in the soprano. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, from this. Yeah. 
kind of sound. Very, mm-hmm. very satisfying. That leading tone resolves right where you want it to. Yeah, the yeah, The bass absolutely. line resolves right where you want it to. And both in the most prominent voices, the ones you hear most readily, the highest and the lowest. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, That's the perfect authentic cadence. That is the perfect. Then there's the imperfect authentic cadence in, in which uh, you still have a five to one, but some of those other things don't don't happen. You know, either uh, the five is not in root position uh, in the bass. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, that was the two to one. Right, or uh, more commonly, uh, you're not ending on one in the soprano. So. Uh, Oh, you landed on the third. Yeah. Still pretty satisfying. Yeah. Still pretty satisfying. But not as complete, so to speak. Right. And then there's the half cadence, which is not so much, I think of it, not so much as a period at the end of your sentence, as a comma. Yeah. Right, because you're going to keep going because it's just ending on the five. So, uh, so uh, for example... Um, Right, kind of a comma. Yeah. You, you you expect that to keep going, right? Yeah. And do whatever. I also kind of think of it as a question mark a little bit. Sometimes. Because it kind of leaves an unanswered. It's like an unanswered. Sometimes, and an expectation that you're going to go on and and, and answer that 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 question. Right. Yeah. So, and then you have the plagal cadence, uh, which is called the amen cadence, because it is it is just a move up to a four. And then back down to one, which they use for amen at the end of like so many things, you know. Amen. Yeah. I've heard that many times. <laughs> I was raised a Catholic. Yeah. Now, nah, yeah. So yeah, you've heard it a lot. <laughs> Ooh, let's try to do that harmony one good time. Um, um, what, what are you singing this? I'm just. I, I should probably be singing the bass line, right? Well, it doesn't matter. Um, can you can you do? Amen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Amen. Let's do one more. I like okay, that. Okay. Okay. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, there you go. The amen the, cadence. Yeah, the, the good old amen cadence. And then there is a deceptive cadence where we're playing along. And then we move to a five, but instead of moving to one, we move to six. Mm. Yeah, and it has the effect of carrying the chord progression forward. Yeah. Because because you didn't come to a to a, to a satisfactory ending, you know now you're going to have to. And then eventually, or do something, you know. I had you like my uh, spontaneous composition, by the way. That was very nice. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so perfect authentic, imperfect authentic, half cadence, plagal cadence, and deceptive cadences. Pretty much uh, the, the gist. In the minor mode, there is such a thing as the Phrygian half cadence, mm. in which you're just moving down from this uh, scale degree six. So... Uh, so um, into into a five. Yeah. Mm. Easy enough. Yeah, it's interesting. Can I hear that one more time? Mm-hmm. Can, um, you, can so, you accent that that six? Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that so that movement in the bass. Yeah. From from uh, lay down to soul. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So that was episode number 19, Cadences. Number 19, Cadences, and that's about the halfway mark. That's about the halfway mark. And if we are to be true to our own um, good study habits episode. <laughs> yeah, we should probably break, right? Because we'd be putting you guys through about an hour 45 of this, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. So so let's uh, pick it up here next time with mm. episode 20. Which will be form and analysis, and that will be a little bit of an earful too. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right. So, anyways, um, 
Thanks for listening. If you like this kind of thing, um, if you like the recaps, we're going to continue to do it. We're going to pay. I know we, we might have lapsed a little bit in the last few episodes about the recaps, but if this really is helpful, as our friend Jonathan Naylor suggests. Apparently, yeah. Then uh, we'll, we'll keep on doing it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we'll, uh, and we'll see you on part two of this episode uh, in a couple of weeks. Stay tuned. There you go. You ask, we deliver. Keep those ideas coming, and we'll continue to listen. After all, it takes a village to raise a good podcast. See you next time for part two.